I rented this Epiphone SG Special Satin E1. And we're gonna see if it's any good. Now this video is not like the other videos out there where it's seven and a half minutes of talking and a minute and a half worth of playing. We're gonna be using multiple amps and multiple different tunings with this guitar. So I highly recommend taking a look at the chapter list down below and of course, the description. There's also gonna be multiple videos with this guitar, so take a look out for them. But enough talking, let's get after it. Now by law, I don't think you're actually allowed to make a guitar review anymore without talking about the specs. So we'll try to do that quickly. So we have a carved poplar body, a bolt-on poplar neck, an unbound Akume fingerboard with the dot inlays, silkscreened Epiphone logo, premium covered tuners. The neck is also a slim taper D shape. So a slightly thicker slim taper. We have the open coil 700T and 650R Epiphone pickups. The Epiphone Loctone Tunematic with the stop bar. Ain't got no bat wing on this. We have the uh, pickups mounted directly to the body rather than the pick guard and the smaller pick guard. We have a paper-like texture here to the satin finish and don't be fooled it is definitely poplar with a mahogany veneer kind of look like we're missing something we have one volume and one tone and uh a little curious here what do you think pcb or hand soldered and would you look at that it's hand soldered so no pcb but those are some highly unrecognizable pots well, color me shocked. That's enough talking for now. Let's take a listen to the sound samples and then we'll talk about the guitar. <laughs>
I'd like to now turn my attention to the guitar community that kind of, you know, you know, gets really upset if you don't do, um, you know, uh, clean with the bridge, middle, and the neck. So, there you go. I've always found it a little more beneficial to hear how the pickups react to, you know, a little bit of a drive in the sound. So here's that. <laughs> Remember earlier when we were talking about the, uh, you know, unnamed or unrecognizable pots? Let's take a listen to them. So the potentiometers here are actually pretty good, pretty accurate. It's not a, you know, full blast and then it moves when you get down to two or one. So I do want to say first and foremost, uh, this guitar here is geared towards um, th those of you out there that are looking for this to be your first guitar. Um, on top of that, you know, if it's not your first guitar, uh, your other one of two other people. Uh, you're looking for a second guitar, or you're part of the modding community, which I used to do, which just drove me nuts because I would buy guitars just to spend way much, way, way more money on uh, pickups and tuners and everything. Um, I don't really do that now. But this is the entry level Epiphone SG. So, um, when I start to talk about some of the features here, if this is your first guitar, or if you're looking to pick this up as you know a second guitar or whatever, uh, don't be offended over what I say. There's a reason for what I say here, and I do want to say that this is a great guitar. Um, there's a lot of mojo to it. it it's it is just like the the other Epiphone that I have rented. Uh, it's got some mojo to it. I'm just not fully bonding with it. So, now that I've said that this is indeed a great guitar, um, I do want to answer some questions that I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to get here. So, how are the tuners? Tuners are okay. Uh, they are one of those ones where you kind of get a, get a running start uh, before it actually grabs the string. So I f do find that when I'm tuning, it's quite often you have to do a quarter turn before it does anything here. So for fine tuning, uh, it's not the best. It's not unusable by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something you kind of have to know before you're doing your tuning. If this is my first guitar, I would have no problem with these tuners whatsoever. The next question that I know I'm going to get is pickups. How are the pickups? So the pickups here I do find are rather hollow. They're hotter pickups, um, which can be good, but it just seems that it's not, there's not a lot of uh, mids in the sound. It's, it's, it's not harsh. There's not a lot of uh, overemphasis on like the high end or anything like that. But, again, it, it, they come across as a little hollow. 
if you're doing uh, a lot of stuff that has grunt and growl to it, these will work in your favor. Um, if you're looking to play some leads along with it, might run into a little bit of issues, but again, you can just EQ to fix that. And of course, it's a bolt-on neck. So how does this feel? Does this get in the way of things? I actually noticed once or twice when I was playing leads, um, but it wasn't something that I was always you know, conscious of. Um, so they did a great job, I think. And it does have that, which is I find very weird to see on like a Gibson Epiphone product. It has that overhang on the fretboard because it's a bolt-on neck. So it just, it looks Ibanez-ish to me. <laughs> Another thing I want to point out here, this seems like it's a Jackson. This seems like Jackson made a, 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 an SG in their Chinese factory. It, that's just how it feels. And I think it has a lot to do with the neck shape being slightly thicker. It feels like it's uh, an, a neck shape from like a Jackson Rhodes, from like a Chinese made Jackson Rhodes. Um, and the feel here uh, of the satin finish, it feels like it's paper. I, it, it's not bad. It, it's very comfortable to play. Um, but it just, it, it feels like that. And, and I've had a couple of Jacksons that were unfinished that had that satin and that's exactly how it feels. It also played like a Jackson, which is not a bad thing because those, some of those Chinese made Jacksons just have magic in them. This guitar here for you may have magic. I find it has mojo and it's giving me some inspiration. So I'll probably be able to write quite a few different riffs with this. And, you know, I'll get that little bit of inspiration where I want to keep going. I'll say, well, you know, I'll, I'll, let me try this and try this with it. That's always good. But this is definitely not something that I'm personally bonding with. It's, it's not something where I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you know, Ryan, it's $290. You know, you rented it from, I won't say the name of the store, but, you know, it rhymes with schmong and schmick Um But it's very easy for me to turn this into a purchase rather than just a rental but I have no desire to do so. But again, this is not a bad guitar by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something where I've been playing for just about 30 years now, and I have certain things that I, I, I know when I'm playing, if I like the guitar or not. Um, I like it, but it's not something that I want to buy. But again, if you go into the store and you see this, or you see this, and you play this, and, th and then you play this, and then this is better, get this. It makes more sense, right? Like, no, don't, don't live by what other people tell you. It's whatever you feel when you're playing the guitar. That's why I always say, if you're going to buy a guitar, don't just play that one that you want to buy. Go and play everything and make sure what you're buying is what you want. Not just, you know, like, oh, that guy has that guitar. I should have that. And again, the names on the headstock shouldn't be something to strive for if this one here isn't doing it for you. If this one is, excellent. It just means that they're made differently. Um, and yeah, they just spec wise, you know, like wood wise and stuff like that, very different. And also comparing it to the other Epiphone, uh, the SG Standard that I rented. Um, the neck is definitely a lot more solid than it. Uh, the slim taper is on the SG standard is thinner than the uh, one on the special uh, satin E1. So tuning stability wise, you're only limited by the tuners. So you, it's not like a, a neck kind of a thing where it could put things out of tune. So I recommend tugging on your strings and only tuning up to pitch, never down to pitch. Because if you tune down to pitch, you start to bend, the string will start to go flat. That's how it works. That's all I gotta say. Again, I'm gonna be making more videos with this guitar, so keep an eye out for them. And I think I'm gonna just keep renting some Epiphone guitars, and I'll probably do a comparison. I'll probably do one uh, against the uh, Les Paul E1 as well. So, thanks for watching.